Liberalization of Uganda's pension sector has been on the card for more than a decade now. In 2011, the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development submitted the Retirement Benefits Sector Liberalization Bill to Parliament for consideration. The bill now before Finance Committee of Parliament has glaring faults lines according to industry experts. They argue that it would be dangerous to pass the bill in its current state as it does not fully address the needs of the social security sector. Tonight, we ask, will workers' money be safe when the bill becomes law? On the spot tonight is the Chief Finance Officer National Social Security Fund, Patrick Ayota, Uganda Law Society President Francis Gimara, and Mazima Retirement Plan Chief Executive Officer Livingston Mokasa. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, all of you are on the spot tonight, and what I mean is that the national spotlight is on you, and mm -hmm. for all those who are looking towards retirement, enjoying their pension, uh, they are looking forward to hearing what can come from you, uh, who we consider experts in this sector. And I'm going to begin from the extreme left of my side with you, uh, Mr. Livingston Mukasa, uh, because you started something called the Mazima Retirement Plan, but of course, we have seen uh, the proposals to amend, the, 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 to liberalize the, the, the pension sector. W what is your take? Because you, if you are going to hold people's money, uh, like a billion or more, or even a trillion shillings, how are we going to be safe, to be sure that our money is safe in the hands of Mr. Uh, of Mr. Mazima, and, and yet we will think uh, it would be safer, I suppose, with the NSSF, because it's government-backed. Uh, good evening, viewers. Thank you, Patrick Kamala, for having me on the show. Uh, the question you start with is quite interesting because it's a question of security. However, when we conceived Mazima Retirement Plan, the whole argument in the nation over the last one decade has been about how do you get the pension, someone to, how do you get the liberalization agenda moving? But what we forgot that the law existed already that could be used to start something as we work on improving the law. So Mazima Retirement Plan was actually born out of the Ubra Act of 2011, which is already on the books, and it's something that we already have. And it's that law passed by Parliament that gives us the ability to, to assure the members that are serving with Mazima that Parliament has already looked at this, the laws of Uganda are compliant, for the, fund, for the scheme like Mazima Retirement Plan to exist, you have to have a custodian appointed and licensed you have to have a fund manager, we have a custodian, he's housing a finance bank, and we have a, a, a fund manager, African Alliance. So the, the law already in place allows us to do. But okay, okay, yes. but b before you actually even get into the, some kind of, uh, I can call it, uh, into the mode of more, more or less banging a, a, a commercial for Mazima. <laughs> <laughs> let, 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 let me, there are so many, so the, the sector is only covering 11% yes. of the population. Yes. How do we tackle the other 89% of Ugandans who are engaged in work, they are contributing to this economy, but somehow they are not, they are not captured? Be because we've made up our, our mind in, uh, as a nation that we need to first get the law to do what we need to do now. We, our argument is the current law has two, actually there are three ways how the, the coverage happens. There is the coverage from the public service section, uh, public service sector, which is covered by under the public service pension scheme. And then you also have the, the private sector, five employees and above, covered with NSSF. Uh, but then you have the voluntary section, where voluntary occupation schemes, these are like 60 of them in this economy, but they have been serving in-house members. So what we did with even the current law was to say, how about if we have a scheme everybody can enroll? Patrick can come, even both Patrick here can enroll. Or you enroll your maid too, your driver too. So that's what we did. And that's why I think the, the coverage can happen in two ways. You need to be able to show people that it's actually an individual's decision. You don't need to be forced. Okay, uh, let, me, let me come to you. You're the chief financial officer of, uh, of, of the National Social Security Fund. Yes. And, and actually, you control about 7.6 trillion <laughs> yes, shillings. I yes, don't sir. think there's anybody who controls that kind of money in this economy. <laughs> uh, Patrick, you, you, st you stand alone on the, on the apex of, mm -hmm. of who is who mm -hmm. in what they control. But 
uh, what is your take on the mandatory contributions to, to remove monopoly? Mm -hmm. do, do you think that would be detrimental to, to NSSF as a fund? I think, let me step a little bit back. I think when we begin the argument with the liberalization, or for or against NSSF, we've not answered the broader question, and you cannot touch on it. The pension sector, or the purpose of a pension, has been laid. It's well very clear. Uh, we are signatories to the ILO Convention. Under ILO Convention 102, it laid what a pension is supposed to do. Basically, provide or mitigate all age poverty. After your working life, that you can continue to have a lifestyle you had as you're working. That's the purpose of a pension. There are three pillars that undergird that. The first pillar is safety. When I'm ready to retire, my money will be there. The second one is adequacy. It will be enough, so I don't lose so much my lifestyle. The third one is coverage. As many people as possible are in it. Those are the three pillars of a pension. Which means when you are beginning to make reforms, the first thing you ask yourself, is the reform I'm going to go to provide me more safety, provide me higher adequacy, provide me more coverage? When you begin that way, the issue of liberalization or not actually is an issue. Because by then, Uganda is very interesting that today, under the NSF Act, the Minister of Finance or the Minister of Social has been given the authority to allow any saver opt out of NSSF into any scheme. So today, the law says the minister can actually create an alternate to NSSF. So and what you are saying that people can, so. people can people can, can can have a run on the, on, on NSSF and take off their fund no. if if they want it the, to, tomorrow. The, the criteria and the seven point something yeah, trillion yeah. you have, you may yeah. wake up and you the, don't have it. Exactly. The criteria that you have to satisfy the minister to where you are going to is as good as or better than NSSF, and there are companies that opted out. Neither did, but then McCarrie did. Parliament has its own scheme. That has happened. So even within this space there, you can create other schemes. Now the voluntary space is of course open. Anybody can as has started. So the issue is not so much about liberalism, but the issue is do we maintain and strengthen these three pillars? Now oh, of course you're not doing well when it comes to coverage. <laughs> no, actually you, you, actually interestingly enough, let me give you the statistics. The fifteen million you gonna have got fifteen million of our workforce in this country. About eleven million are in the informal sector. Yes. Yes. Four million are in the former sector. Yes. All right? Half a million are covered by, are in the public sector. Yes. About 1.5 million are covered by NSF. NSF. So you have out of the four million who are in the former sector, 1.5 are being covered by NSSF. And half but the current law has saying NSF can only require, as a mandatory, an employer who has more than five. The other two million fall under people who have got more than, less than five employees. So those are not going to be covered by NSF unless they come in voluntarily. Okay, okay. Francis Gimara, you are the president of the Uganda Law Society. We would want to know what is the Uganda Law Society's viewpoint on this very uh, liberalization kind of, of deal. Thank you so much, Patrick, and good evening to viewers. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, in the past uh, couple of months, engaged on this issue. And... Uh, where it is now, uh, there have been attempts to recall this bill, and we have uh, come up to say that our view is that the bill should not be withdrawn from Parliament, because that's the most current happening regarding the patient sector liberalization bill. So, and we have our reasons for that, because the liberalization of the a pension sector started way back in 2003 with the stakeholders transition group then there was a task force in 2004 all these gave recommendations and Ugandans consistently have given their views this matter has gone to cabinet and uh, <coughs> one of the deliverables which led to establishing of the Uganda Retirement Benefits Authority Act you know, was implemented. The bill was presented in 2011 and the act was passed. The act has been implemented and there is a regulator. Now, the reform remains incomplete in our considered opinion because they ought to have brought 
several amendments. Number one, which we have also noted, they ought to have, even before bringing this bill, brought amendments to the NSSF Act. Mm -hmm. That has not been done. We are saying, even then when it is not done, now that this bill that was tabled in Parliament 2011 was reintroduced again in 2016, we are of a very firm view that we are walking in circles. And we came out together with other stakeholders to say that it is important that we debate these issues because we've been at it for a long time from 2003. We need to discuss issues of coverage. They are critical. Mm -hmm. We need a, an effective legal framework that helps to cure problems where which uh, Patrick has spoken ab uh, has highlighted issues of you know uh, where NSF by law deals with five employees and above that has to be resolved okay uh, but through issues, legislation. issues of coverage uh, uh, Livingston do, does that require you know removing of monopoly or does that require mm -hmm. y you know of, of uh, bringing in other people because I think it, it's sort of a, a governance or administrative work really uh, I think uh, the nation is watching us the whole issue that the debate is flawed on both sides for those in that, what sense, uh, that, that uh, want both in the sense that the, the elephant in the room is the, what I call the democratization of pension in Uganda if we say that our nation we have if, if we said we had 15 million children going to school and we say we can only take only two million children to school they just stay out it will be chaos in this in this country that's exactly because social security is almost equivalent to education now if we're telling our, our, the nation that we can't figure out a way to accommodate the others because we are afraid of political backlash we are afraid of NSSF interests and some people that say we have one million workers come on we're going to walk down the lane, and the biggest cause of poverty in Uganda is going to be old age poverty. So that's why it's flawed. We need to be talking. That's why we say, from Mazima's point of view, we've made our, 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 our presentation before Parliament. And we told them the preamble is wrong. Because what mm. they envisage that NSSF is fraud, actually NSSF is profitable. I say it on, on, on record. It's profitable. So pension is profitable. But what we haven't figured out, and what the nation needs to work out, is how do we bring everybody? And we of the view that it has to be a hybrid. Give people, let's have a national scheme where people make small contributions, but then give them an opportunity to actually contribute more as their incomes are season. Because we're talking about people that are in agriculture who have money from mangoes one season and they don't have mango but, money but, from but, 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 but the isn't, isn't that dangerous that you can open it up and everybody will come up from anywhere and they start their own sector and you say they convince you maybe they can uh, fill in the dots and, and, and tick the, the, the box and they have everything that you require. But really, when you look at the fundamentals, they are not strong enough for me to be sure mm -hmm. that my funds with them, which is supposed to be money mm -hmm. for my retirement, mm -hmm. is safe. And, and, and Patrick... So then they'll get worried, Actually, even though it's supposed to be like an, an emerging like I'm, a I'm going to build up on what he just said. The way pensions are layered in the most capitalist country, the US, Canada, Singapore, Malaysia, is actually a hybrid. But the way it is layered is this. On the bottom line, on the bottom pillar, or the bottom layer, is what you call the basic guarantee. That's a national scheme that offers the basic guarantee to that. On top of it, then they layer a voluntary. Now, some countries have mixed a bit with the mandatory, but they have the bulk of it in the basic. And then on top of it is individual schemes to create that adequacy. That's actually, as a country, what we would have done. The two layers on So, are, are you suggesting in that kind of system, yes. a, a, a pensioner or, or a worker mm -hmm. can belong to two? He would have the mandatory, the mandatory, which is required. Then he can, using some incentives, then he can save more uh, in the second and the third day. And, and, and Patrick, this is what I said, is, is that there has been insincerity. Mm -hmm. Because for the affluent, for the people working in some of our biggest multinationals, they actually don't have one plan. They have an in-house plan, they have NSSF, mm -hmm. and then they make contribution into these insurance companies. Well, this is exclusion that Mazima is talking about. We cannot allow it to happen. Because at the end of the day, why do you think you, you are covered? You are going to go to the village and the village will look on your payout from NSSF mm -hmm. and everybody will want to feast on that. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. 
you cannot have a small part because it doesn't cover. At the end of the day, everybody wants to feast mm -hmm. on someone who has gotten. You try getting 100 million on your account mm -hmm. and let the village know. You see what will happen. But you know, so, uh, you know you, we, okay, uh, uh, Francis, mm -hmm. because if, if NSSA, for example, you have, uh, I suppose, an, an investment advisor who is supposed to be robust, you have maybe mm -hmm. uh, audit firms like which, which yeah. have a name, yeah. and, and then when you are taking a decision on my behalf, mm -hmm. then I'm thinking like, okay, these decisions are sound because they are backed by experience, they are backed by skill, they are backed by people who know mm -hmm. uh, their, th their things. So perhaps that you're not going to make a loss. What if you make a loss? Uh, if you are a small uh, fund, you make a loss. Because if they make a loss, I think governments can come in, isn't it? What happens if, if another mm -hmm. smaller company makes a loss? Uh, the issue is, who, where is the money? Because the whole point, mm. the, the, assu the assumption is, and I have... If you make a wrong investment decision, and it wipes out all the money, uh, uh, so I'm where do we I'm go? I'm because you can I'm easily do that. I, I'm, I'm coming to, to that that. Because the way the investments of a pension fund are, are, are done is very different from what happens in your circle or in your club or investment club. The investment decisions, here is where they are. The money, once it gets to, to the custodian, the custodian only keeps papers. The fund manager buys, if you look at the asset allocation right now of Mazima, a very small fund, you will see it's fixed deposit treasury bills. I'm, I'm, so in other words, I'm coming to I'm, a point. I'm, I'm, I'm not, dis I'm not dis even disputing I'm, I'm, that. I'm I am saying, uh, God forbid, if something happens and even the fund manager whoever it is you have taken a wrong decision it has wiped out your capital or your money it, it, it would how be, do i it say, would how, be a how, how am i secure it, and actually because it would have for that to happen because I, for them i think government gives you some guarantee isn't it actually uh, i'm going to kind of uh, respond a bit to you with a live example i lived in the u.s for over 20 years i worked there Though you didn't speak the Yankee accent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, no. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, mm. and it was wrong, I had three types of pension. There was that which was mandatory. It went to the U.S. government as a social security plan. On top of it, I had an occupational plan through my employer. Then I had an individual plan. The 2000 global, the 2008 global crisis wiped out my individual plan, wiped out my employee plan did not touch the basic guarantee because of that. The danger with this bill, as it is now, it says this. Your accrued benefits will include the following. All your contributions, all your earnings, and the losses of the scheme. I could have 100 million shillings at the beginning of the year. The scheme makes a loss, and I have 95 million shillings, and violate the safety principle we talked about. In the of today, you have 100 million shillings at the beginning of the year. The least that can happen to that money would go up by 2.5% by, by low, 102 million shillings. And that's how your money gets protected. Yeah, but, but also it doesn't get protected because of, of the nature of our economy. Because tomorrow we can wake up in a serious inflation and even that 100 million is worthless. That's but true. <laughs> it is, that's it is, true. Okay. That's true. Um, Mr. Mr. Gimara, how, if you are to twitch this and make it better, what would you propose? Well, we have made some proposals. They are concerns, valid concerns. But I think that um, within uh, the OECD guidelines, we have been looking at how you can uh, put into place mechanisms to ensure more protection. For instance, it is very clear that even as you think about this law, you think about the management of pension today, we, look, we start from the entities created under the Rulba Act. For instance, we have benchmarked the issues of trustees because the OECD guidelines talk about firmness as far as regulation of trustees is concerned. It also talks about uh, good corporate governance. It talk, also talks about proper investment management practices. So even when we are talking about all these things, I think for us we have proposed, number one, the fears are there. But we can't live on fear. We have mechanisms within the legal fraternity to create some... If, if, some if, if you could explain more, if you can, where is the challenge in the good corporate governance? What, 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 what challenge do they meet there? What do they want to treat? Now? Let's start from just the, uh, the, the, the proposals in the bill. You know, it sets out several structures for management of retirement benefit schemes. But we have found that there are some 
things that are missing. That's why our view is that instead of withdrawing this bill, we need to contend with the issues when they are still in the committee. For instance, we have already proposed to that committee that you cannot and you should not proceed with the process of enactment of this bill without strengthening the law on trustees to make yes. trustees individually accountable for the decisions that they are going to make in terms of management of the funds. And this cuts across. This should also extend to NSSF because in the past we have seen that NSSF has also not been spared by political intrusion into its activities. So our proposal is broad. We are saying that let's look at the concerns raised by stakeholders, but move towards putting into place mechanisms to ensure that there is sound corporate governance. When, when the president of the Uganda Law Society makes a statement <laughs> that NSSF has not been spared the political <laughs> intrusion, <laughs> I, I am of course forced to, to, to ask you more yeah. on how you have not been spared. You are the chief finance officer. You hold 7.6 well, trillion of Ugandan money savers. At least I can assure the viewers, <laughs> and I can assure Mr. Gimara, I've been there for six years, and I can tell you there has not been political intrusion in the fund. The fund is as strong as the people who are internal to it. The bill to say no is as easy. And anybody will try to come, maybe a politician, could be a business, they will try to come and try to sell a piece of land that's worthless, whatever it is. Your bill to say no is what saves the story. But we have seen uh, some examples, uh, the, the, the Temangalo case, some... Yes. some, some no, no, no. I tell you, and, and, and I tell you, they were, depending on how strong internally you are, it helps have strong trustee governance uh, structure in place. At the end of the day, the integrity of the Ugandan manning that could be current bank, Bank of Uganda, exactly. Stanbrick, whatever it is, the integrity of that individual or those individuals matters. But the integrity Most. of the banking system <laughs> has been proven that really it's wobbly. Because <laughs> w there's one of, one of the banks that was giving accolades, given accolades year after year, and, and within no time, it, it was having issues. So we cannot now, in this time, think that the instability of the banking sector and is yet the government, can we? And yet the government Livingston, can, can we? Uh, I, th I think we should. Because they're working with them now, because they're, those are your friends. <laughs> no, so not exactly. Say, but, talk, but whenever we go out to talk about what we do, about Mazima Retirement Plan, the first issue, that there is an issue, whether are you not a crook? You yourself as an individual. Mm -hmm. And after you've dealt with that, and you've convinced someone, then he says, but the system you're working in is... Okay. is a, 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 a little bit quirky. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but the argument here is, we Ugandans need to know that you cannot, if you don't take a risk, you don't expect a return. It's as simple as that. So, so the issue that you're going to say, uh, I will not come in just because I, inflation might happen, uh, they might, I think that's excuses of laziness. And at the end of the day, they affect us as individuals. So I, I would say that the government of Uganda, since 1960, since independence, has never defaulted on its debt. That's on the record. So 80% of Mazima's fund is borrowed to the government of Uganda. It has never defaulted. However, inflation might eat your money, that might come. But it has never defaulted. And, 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 and that worries me more. Because when you, you may say it just as however inflation may come, but the way how we see the, the, economic, the economy is, that can actually be a reality. And, and it can wipe it off totally within just one year. Mm -hmm. And yet you have saved for about uh, 25 years mm -hmm. or 30 years. We're, we're going to take a break mm -hmm. and we come back. Let's drill deep into this discussion mm -hmm. and see how best maybe this can be twitched for the benefit of the Ugandan pensioners. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight are Mr. Francis Gimara, the president of Uganda Law Society, Mr. Patrick Ayota, chief finance officer of Uganda Nas of National Social Security Fund, and uh, Mr. Livingston Mukasa, who is the CEO of Mazima Retirement Plan. If I may begin with you in this segment, Patrick, uh, if they introduced competition in the mandatory co uh, contributions, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm getting it right, yes. w would that make you better or that would be problematic for you? No, it would not be problematic for NSSF. Actually, it would beat any competition. I can assure you of that. But it would be bad for the country. And I'll, I will tell you why it would not be good for so the country. So why is it good for you and then it is bad for the country? Because I'll tell you something. A national scheme has a mandate that extends beyond just the returns any scheme offers members. The law of investment says this. The most 
visible element of investment is the return. If I offer you 12% and he offers you 14%, you're going to move to him. Correct? That's the natural element. You will chase a return. The return is based, based on two elements, your gross revenues and your costs. You manage those two and you have a good return. But because we're all chasing a higher return, the law of investment says the higher the return, the higher you raise the risk. Well, let me, let me ask you. you I, I, I'm working with a, with a bank, in a way, mm -hmm. to, to do some financial transaction. Mm -hmm. I have my money with you. Right. You are actually the ones giving the money to the bank, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that bank is giving that money at around 20-something percent. Correct. For you, which is our money, by mm -hmm. the way, mm -hmm. they, you give it to them, mm -hmm. they give it to us at 24% mm -hmm. or 25 yes. right. and for you, you keep it, do you give us a, a percentage of uh, how much? 12%. 12%. Correct. Does it make sense? No, except for that. Why? Well, then if you no, know no, it doesn't, it no, no, doesn't no, make no, sense. No. That's one of the biggest arguments I've said. said. Why don't you just lend to me directly? As a pension fund, I'm not, that is not my business, not to lend out. money out. Mm -hmm. I would actually but, 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 would you, but you can see that the reality, no, no, but, but you can see the reality is actually unfair. Remember what I told you. The that, reality is unfair to Ugandan. Remember what I told you that in the effort of chasing that return, you take the higher risks. How many bad loans do banks have because they lent you money? Is that what you want your pension to have on its books? You can't. We have no confidence, no authority to lend to you directly because the idea is when you become eligible your money is waiting for you okay um so so you, he says it's, it's good maybe for nssf but could be bad for the country if you introduce uh ma mandatory co allowed uh, I, competition I, I, I think at this particular juncture for the mandatory contribution what we are seeing is that the formal economy is the the informal sector is outgrowing even in contribution to the gdp so how, how do you calculate it it's the, you, you boss it says 50, 50 but if it is not captured and it's informal, how do you know? <laughs> but they say it's contributing more. Mm -hmm. And now, my argument is that if we have to look at the issue of coverage, but trying to get so that more people can be able to contribute. Now, but you got to the issue of, of, of return, and uh, as I was saying, where would you make the investment? One, I, I want to draw back on our experience, because many people are afraid of the cost of administration to the fund, in terms of the fund management and the custodian. I'm get, I have hired the best fund management company in Uganda at zero cost. I will say zero cost because when we went in, they don't need me to put up 20, 30 million to access this. All they say, whatever you bring in, we charge you 0.4% for their expertise. Now, I wouldn't get that in-house for a small fund like me, mm -hmm. unlike NSSF. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't get the custody and all the technology from, for, 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 from what I'm getting from Housing Finance Bank. Now, if we're going to build this economy, I think the nation needs to get over the, 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 the fear of contributing to cost because there is, you, are, you are getting a return. You are getting access to systems that you might not be able to get. NSSF can have in-house fund, fund administrators and actuaries. I have to find those in the market. Mm -hmm. But Francis, we could be having a living in Mukasa, a man of good intentions, and um, probably he means well, and I think he does. But then we are in a country with a, an integrity deficit. Can we allow everybody else to come up and work mm -hmm. when we, before we know it, maybe mm -hmm. we, we get on a crook? Mm -hmm. Well, that's why we, we, we propose that, uh, you know, in, in terms of creating systems to provide effective checks and balances, you then have got to construct within the proposed laws appropriate checks and balances to ensure that the crooks will be checked. And on that issue, I think that for me we should move away from fear. Let's look at this bill and say that <coughs> where, what do we need to make this country work? We need people who are in the informal sector. You know, can NSSF alone do that? Mm -hmm. NSSF will continue to do. The bill should be unbundled to ensure that the place of NSSF as a national scheme is sustained, its corporate governance is improved, and they continue to do that role. But you should also open up at least a segment for other private players to come in. And that segment, we can debate about what percentage. Mm -hmm. But it is important to unpack the economy of this country. NSSF has improved over the recent past. And part of it is because of these processes. We see that now NSSF, even when the NSSF Act does not 
ask them to convene meetings for members have done that. They have improved governance. But it's much. It's, it's, it's as a result. It's part of the, of the coming competition. Yes. <laughs> it's, it, we, we see that ever so since this process has started, the debate picked up in 2011, we have seen that NSSF has improved. So what the government is saying, Patrick, so that, mm -hmm. in, that, 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 that the impending or, or, or real competition is actually breeding quality yeah, at least uh, at, at, in your uh, court. Actually, for, uh, I'll, I'll actually disagree here. We came out of the private sector, both my MD, Richard, myself, and a lot of the top guys. We are doing it because it's the right thing to do. When we, think, when we are approaching the investment, it's not even what will <coughs> function, it's really, is this the right thing to do mm -hmm. for the fund and for the member? And that has been the biggest driver to us. Not about the competition. There's a cost you, you didn't mention, which is the biggest cost that actually is the hindrance to the spread of the, the sector. Cost of administration or cost of collections. NSF today, our operating cost, 80% of it is collections. Fund management and custodians, that's the easiest thing to do. Yep. That's the easiest thing for anybody to do. Collecting and convincing somebody that you need to save, that's what's hindering the informal sector that we have. What we need to be doing, what will you convince a Mukasa on the street, a party mm -hmm. on the street, mm -hmm. to save with NSSF? If you tell him he's 25 years, he's 30 years, or say, save, you'll get your money in 20 years, 25, he'll tell he you go jump. He'll not come in. So, okay, uh, uh, so Livingston, so yeah. let's just uh, uh, change the gear a little bit. How do you tell Ugandans or maybe uh, sensitize them that really saving shouldn't be coming as the last option but should even be the first option and then you don't have to f put a lot of effort into trying to collect but it becomes easier because they are interested in doing what is right for them. There, there are two points that I need to raise very quickly. The first one is the issue of awareness, public awareness that needs to be created. What we found at Mazima Retirement Plan actually that's a public good. Mm -hmm. Now, you cannot deploy private capital to provide it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. that, that's important. Exactly. If you do, you will go under. Mm -hmm. The second point that we find uh, on, on, on that is that Ugandans need to know. There is a fact that my friends at NNSSF actually collected. They said that people went to, that went to work in 1990 that are retiring today, 97% of them are alive. Yeah. They are collecting their money. Mm -hmm. So this perception we have had as Ugandan that we're going to die young, eh? that kind mm -hmm. of thinking that I, I'm going to die young, let me do everything. I'm yeah, because I'm until doing. recently, life expectancy was at around 47. Body, yes. And yet you can only access your money at 55. Yes, so mm -hmm. that so was not making sense. Mm -hmm. If you expect me to live for 47 years, and yet your money is coming at 55. So, so now whoever is watching tonight, mm -hmm. the message is simple. You have a 97% chance yes, of yes. living through 55. Yes. Now, if you don't save and you expect you, mm -hmm. you go on your knees, you start praying to live longer, mm -hmm. God is going to be in trouble with you. Very seriously. Mm -hmm. You're praying to live longer, you have nothing. So he's going to actually take you. So to spare you the misery. There is something else. Or you can live about. longer and actually, <laughs> and actually watch, the, watch, watch the misery. <laughs> now, because that's, that's mostly the... Now, there's something in the bill there that I think is quite good yes. that needs to be maintained. One is the incentive you provide people to pay and would actually have a broader mm. impact on the country in this way. Mm. The bill proposes that up to 30% of your wages or can income from mm. the home sector can be exempted from income tax. That's a big motivator because if you think if your pay is 30% and you're earning a million shillings in the formal sector and you can shield 300,000 shillings of that from your rate from the tax legally you'll find that you can begin to pack this money in a pension. Is it workable? If you just take away but payee, really, but when, when the economy... No, no, actually, it's very... That is one of it. But that's one of the things. Yeah. That's really good. That's, a, that's a kitty for some you know, No, it's actually, actually a wonderful thing. And then the other thing is, for people who are, who are not mandated to do it, you have to be a little flexible. Yes, we You can can't know. tell them, you put your money away until you're 55. You have to be able to structure it in such a way that he can access that money in five years, ten years, so that he benefits. can either housing, yeah. medical, okay, education. So, so, okay, so, so, okay. midterm mm. uh, access of benefits. How yes. can that be worked on, Francis? You know, no, I think the bill uh, makes a proposal that for those who are either 45 years or who have saved 10 years, mm. you know, can, uh, can, can access a portion of their benefits for purposes of mortgage, 
or housing as well. Yeah. And I think that's a positive. Exactly. Because uh, now, instead of waiting up to the end, mm -hmm. you know, at a certain stage, you can uh, meet the need of housing. You mm -hmm. can opt for a mortgage. And uh, the, other, the other issue that positive in the bill, which Ugandans must uh, again uh, take note of, because, uh, and for us, that's why we are pushing for these bills. It's not only the small issues in it, because it has reforms that are very critical for this sector. Mm -hmm. They have widened the mandatory benefits, you know, and that is something that we can look at. Beyond the survivors, beyond age, you have uh, education, you have unemployment benefits. So it gives quite some... Uh, some benefits that, that, that meet the needs of, of Uganda today. Housing is critical, and, and, and I'm happy that the issue of Simbe was resolved. Mm -hmm. By again, uh, I, I say this because, uh, and that's why I want to get to have a, a protective environment for good managers to be able to manage these schemes. NSSF today is under very good management. I, for one, I... I, I I was involved in the Simbe case. The Simbe case was a disaster. That's why I say if Patrick talks of six years and to date, if we take the fund before six years, the Simbe joint venture was done professionally, in my view. It was a good, good, good partnership between Mugoya and NSSF. One person was bringing land. NSSF was putting in about $8.2 mm -hmm. And then what happens? They are caught up in all these structures, procurement, authorizations of the minister, then investigation by the IGG, and then it goes to court. At the end of the day, you know, that 8.2 billion shillings, the matter goes to constitutional court. Constitutional court, of course, are just looking at the constitution. They are not concerned mm -hmm. that already 8.2 billion shillings mm -hmm. has moved. So they declare that contract illegal. Mm -hmm. Where it happens, that money is written off by NSSF about 2010. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was just brought back. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, it was because of good management that they decided to negotiate with Mugoya. Mugoya was not obligated. So we want this bill to come into place. We want NSSF to be transformed into a situation where it is managed under the regulator Urba, but also we would like that people who run uh, so things I, like so either NSSF mm -hmm. so are, are or you, Mazima Are you saying that at the moment it is supra Urba in a way? It is no, Urba? Uh, no, no, no. The, it, no it, it, it's part of it. So why are you they saying they are under Urba? Because they are definitely under. Because when you say they should be under. No, because their law. The implication now is that. Their law has not been amended to attend to these changes. You need the act amended. And our view is that proceed beyond where they are, create a very strong regulatory framework where you make the trustees personally liable, you know, both civil and in criminal law okay. for the decisions they make. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. And when you do that, then you can allow NSSF to continue with what they are doing, but also allow the Mazimas of this world to also take participate in this sector. Because then, where we are, the majority of people in the informal sector must be reached. We need to mobilize as much savings as possible. The capital markets industry in Uganda today cannot take off. Cannot take off. Because a... the mobilization of funds to inject into that is not yet complete. There's only one player. But, but the economy is, is getting more informal and informal. No, 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 no. It is. But you see, there's a lot of money in the informal sector. This is part of the organization. There's a lot of money in the informal sector. This is part of the organization. That is the reality. The organization of the pension sector is part of the reforms to organize the informal sector, to begin thinking long term. And also, it is an avenue to mobilize savings mm -hmm. and the much needed capital. Mm -hmm. Because today our capital in, in Uganda, much of it is is is, is foreign extracted. Mm -hmm. And and we can't we can't grow this country 
on, on, on the basis of foreign debt. Our debt is not sustainable. Okay, we're, we're, going, we're going to take a break, gentlemen. And when we come back, I think I'll be beginning with Mr. Patrick Ayota. Some of these investment decisions they have made. Uh, because there was a scare, I think, in the 9th Parliament, because they are the majority shareholders, I think, in Umeme. But then Parliament was having other ideas. In fact, was even telling them to pack up and go. And that scared quite a number of people. How did they reach some of these investment decisions? We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara and my guests tonight are mm -hmm. Mr. Livingston Mukasa, Mr. Patrick Ayota and Mr. Francis Gimara. We're looking into the Retirement Sector Liberalization Bill 2011. It also talks about, Francis, the, if, that, that if, I'm, if I'm ready to get my money at 55, I shouldn't get it in a one lump sum. They can give it, uh, uh, should I installment? Yes, I think the, the annuity. Yeah, the, the bill proposes that um, you take a, a portion, then uh, the other one will go to an annuity, so that instead of you taking all your money when you clock the mandatory age, you will. You are paid a salary of it, sorts. Yeah, you you paid so that you know you continue mm -hmm. uh, having something. That of course at the corporate level is good for still mobilization of uh, of, of, of of money. But also, it will help, especially those who, you know, I think our culture here, many times when people take lump sum, they then begin mm -hmm. uh, engaging in business when they are old. I know, I know, I know mm -hmm. of, of many people in 1991 when they were retrenched. I, I recall that they came to villages, uh, started shops and all that, but because they had not done their 10,000 rule of practice of going through the <laughs> vagaries <laughs> of getting to know how to do business, yeah. most of them, the shops, they started uh, taking the stock in the shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, uh, the, sh the stock is gone, uh, the money is gone, mm -hmm. stress sets in, and they are, they are dying. So mm -hmm. the bill is saying that, okay, take a lump sum, but the rest get into an annuity. So, which, which again tells us that uh, these, these uh, funds then should actually be having a component where you can sensitize people uh, mm -hmm. on financial literacy or maybe uh, investment management and all that kind of stuff. And actually, so that you just don't get at the money and you get the excitement and before uh, you know it, in a week's time, it's, not, it's gone. We're actually doing that because the um, part one we're starting is what we call the Club 55. It helps then we bring in the experts. As an SFR, I cannot give you financial expert as to a fund management expert. But there are a number of entities in this in this country that are licensed to have the expertise to do that. What we're doing is putting them together so that now at least from age fifty they begin to discuss. You may be getting hundred million shillings. What are you going to be doing? There are opportunities here. Have you thought about this and that? So that actually that that is very critical for actually the pensioners to do. So we are doing that. There's something that you mentioned that I think is also important to kind of learn. You kind of say that you need the NSF Act amended so that uh, Mazima can start. And uh, some viewers could think that NSF is there preventing no, 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 Mazima no. from That's starting. That's not what I mean. No, <laughs> it's not that. Mazima That's can start, there's no problem with they that. They're already, they're already there. Yeah. in business. Yeah. So, so, that just want to that. Yeah, yeah. so the idea of annuity is actually good. Now mm. what, what we've proposed, because people who are saving now in NSSF is like an implicit contract, they are saving under this law, which told them that when you are 55, you are going to get a lump sum. What we propose that give them an option so that any new entrant into the, plan, into the scheme now automatically goes into the annuity arrangement. But if you are already saving in a scheme, because of that implicit arrangement you understood, have a choice, the option to either take it as a lump sum or an annuity. And through an education, I think people will understand that they, that can actually work. Okay, uh, uh, Livingston, yes. a typical Ugandan, yep. for you to have a salary that is meaningful, in my view, mm -hmm. on that salary you should have something to eat, Yes. you should have something to save, yep. mm -hmm. and then you have something to invest. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it should do those three things. Mm -hmm. But really, it's hard. Mm -hmm. In most, in most employed Ugandans, mm -hmm. to have those three things. In, mm -hmm. for, in most mm -hmm. cases, you are even struggling to have something to eat mm -hmm. yep. before you even think you can save from something mm -hmm. or, or, or even invest. And so most people look at, let me invest in the child, let me educate this child, and at the age of 55, 60, mm -hmm. or 70, this child is my retirement plan. Uh, that has driven 
the agenda we do at Mazima. The concept that I should educate my child and this is my retirement insurance plan is, is something that we are strongly against. And I, I am on the record. I'm looking after my father in his retirement. And so I could see in the two generations. I can see my father and the have to take care of him. But I can also see my son coming up. Now, this is, what has, this, this is the real fact. We are having less children. Mm -hmm. So everybody here, my generation is having less children than what my father had. Mm -hmm. So now they, they are less children to depend on. Now, they are also working globally. So in the end, you, she will marry somebody from South Korea and they will end up living in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So they are very far out. By the time I pick up a phone call to call, I could be dead. So in other words, it's no longer possible. But, and the, there, but, but the technology has made it so easy that you can get money from Singapore. I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming <laughs> to the minute critical, on your phone. The, the critical aspect of it is what we call the cycle of poverty. Because we are failing to, to break the cycle of poverty. You are front-loaded and back-loaded. Back-loaded with the responsibilities of the clan and the family, front-loaded with your own family. If we can cut off the back-loading that happens, we, our generation, breaks off so that we can take care of ourselves. They will accumulate wealth. And that's your, what father, your father yes. invested in you. Yes. And your father is living in his retirement kind of project. He looked at investing in the mm -hmm. child called Livingstone yes. Yes. and is working for him. But you think it can't work for anybody it else? It won't work because I have high expectation. For, for starters, if I look at, at Livingstone as a, a living example, my expectation is to travel. I need a, a, an air ticket to go somewhere. To, to, for, for, and I, I need to go to the beach, maybe play golf. So I have a high expectation. And I'm going to live longer. My generation will live longer. So when you, you, then you throw in urbanization where we have been detached from the land that we use to, to demarcate. You get your piece, so you can also build a house there. That, that has happened. So urbanization is escalating. In fact, it will be 50-50. In the next 10 or 15 years, it will be 50% of Africans will be in the urban area. So these are the factors you can no longer ex depend on your children to be your retirement plan. It's actually, we say, it's not... It's not uh, 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 Francis, I don't know what, uh, because I've been trying to peruse, but is it, wouldn't it be a better idea that if you reach mid, mid, uh, let's say middle age, before even at 40 something, then you can access this money, maybe 50 percent, and invest it, and maybe start something when you still have energy, you still have skill, you still have agility, mm -hmm. and then in the long run, it can contribute in building the economy. Then, I, when you mm -hmm. give it to me at 55, maybe 60, and I'm moving towards being senile. I, I, I think the thinking uh, of the bill is to provide to provide an avenue to support you to some extent. But again, let's not forget the overriding purpose of a pension. Yes. should support you at the tail end of your life. But granted, uh, there are many things happening in your situation that would require that you access support using your savings. And that is why I, the idea of mid-term access tied to a mortgage and a loan for a residential house is critical. Because evidently, you need a house. Yeah. Part of the then, you also have to think about the bill is widening the scope for benefits. And it is touching on what is critical. The mandatory benefits, like I highlighted, have been widened, but also the optional benefits, you know, to enable support to education, again, home, uh, home ownership, are also provided for. And these are positives in the bill. So I think there is a very solid attempt to ensure that there is a balance between support in things that are critical in your station of life balanced against the overall need for you to be supported at the end of your life. That in your old age, you should okay. have access to resources to live a decent life. Because that's the, the, overri the overriding yeah. the intention. Let, let me just say a bit about investment. Yes, Do you know the failure rate of businesses in Uganda? Within five years, over 90% of businesses fail. So you take 
the money that is invested for you safely and you subject it to a 90% failure rate, you can see that is coating disaster. And, 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 and a very critical point to anyone listening. But what do you expect? If I am, for example, why, why do they fail? They are getting money from a bank. At, at an interest rate of about 25%. Patrick, I want You're to working know. maybe in two production. You're having electricity tariffs that are so high. That, that's that's you are moving, that's you're moving, you're working I, I, I want to no. highlight something. It's a mix well, of factors. It, yeah, but, mm -hmm. but those are some of them. Uh, Patrick, I want to highlight something. Who is going to make in profit and, and, under such but, interest, but, but, Mr. But let me Mr. Yoting? And, let me, and, and this almost answers the other question. Especially for members who are out there. Your employer is not contributing to NSF and yet they are required to. The best investment you can actually make, think of this, by law, this is what the law has done, you put one shilling in, your employer has to put in two shillings. From financial terms, just the country rate, on day one you make 200%. It's one of the best investments you can ever make because the employer is being forced to double what you're saving. That return is incredible. And, and, and let, me, let me open the line, Livingston, so that we get to hear yeah. what Ugandans are saying tonight on this very um, benefits liberalization bill, 2011. I have a, a caller online. Let me take the very first caller online. Hello? Hello? I have a caller online. Hello? Hello? Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Andrew. I'm calling from Machindi. Okay, go right ahead, Andrew. Uh, my contribution is on... Uh, uh, hello? Yes, uh, just keep talking. Do not mind about the echo. Okay, um, my concern is on the efficiency of managing the, the scheme and the pension benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have to meet the cost of paying the fund manager, you have to pay an administrator, you have to pay a custodian, and now that constrains on the return on the investment of the pension sector. So how do we have to, to, to modify that and see that we can be able to efficiently improve the return on the investment, but also be able to sustain the whole thing? Thank you. Okay, I think Patrick will, will, will respond to that. Um, let me take one or two more callers online, and then uh, my guests in the studio will answer you. Both of you. If you have questions, you could be having contributions to make tonight. I have a caller nine. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Yes, you are on air, sir. What's your name? This is Rafambay Baim from Ogazi. Yes. Um, can you turn down the volume of your TV? So that it doesn't bring an echo to where you are and here, then we shall have a healthy conversation, sir. So now my problem is yes. Those people. Ah, sorry. We lost the line. Lost him online, and uh, let's take another call online. Perhaps if uh, the line is clearer. Hello. Hello. Yes. Good evening. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Kenneth Karuhanga. I'm calling from Ishaka. Go right ahead, sir. Kenneth Karuhanga. You're loud and clear. Yes, I wanted to <coughs> comment on the guy who said the, that the investment on NSSF is a bit too high. It's too what? And he, he said the investment on SSF is the interest they put for the employer is incredible. And the, I wanted to highlight uh, on this that this NSSF, the percentage employer puts, uh, determines the growth that you're going to get. So first consider the growth, and then on the growth, it is where they will deduct the 5% and then the 10%. So if I'm going to be paid, let's say, 1 million, they consider uh, the growth. So at the end of the day... So in other words, it's your money which they claim to be adding it, exactly. from them. Is, is that what you mean? My money, yeah, it is my money that they claim that they are putting for me. <laughs> okay, I think, I, thank you very much from Mishaka there. I yeah, think that was a nice uh, um, mm -hmm. take on you, how things are. Mm -hmm. I hadn't realized it that way. But I tend, I'm trying to agree with you. <laughs> 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 Let me take another call online. <laughs> Hello? 
Hello. Yeah. Good evening, sir. What's your name? Uh, my name is Ben Ayabu. Ben Ayabu, you're on air, sir. Go right ahead. Um, hello? Yes, you're on air, Ben Ayabu. Go right ahead, sir. Yes, uh, I just wanted to make a comment. Mm -hmm. And it's related to... Yes, it's related to the aspect of uh, the laws. You are listening to your own echo, and so you can't make a statement coherent and in, in okay. a way. So uh, I don't know why. Uh, Do uh, not mind about the echo. Just continue. Tell us what you want to say, Ben. Okay, what I want to say is that um, many people, many... All right, I have to cut it, Ben. So, all right, let me take the very last call. My producer telling me this is one. Okay, quite a number of people want uh, to, to to ask questions or contribute. Let me take the last call of mine. Hello? 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Hello? Good evening, sir. The problem is that uh, um, what I've, I've realized is that when you put up, let me just say this once more. I keep on saying this. If you turn up the volume, it will give you an echo, and we cannot have a healthy conversation. So the moment you want to call, you turn down the volume of your TV, then you'll have a healthy conversation. Mm -hmm. Without that, you'll be listening to yourself, and that will confuse you. Okay, uh, maybe Patrick. Yeah, uh, two quick questions, I think, uh, regarding fund management, and you said, how can you boost the return? And I think uh, Livingston actually touched on it. There, it does not make sense for a small scheme to hire in-house expertise to be fund managers, to be custodians. But under that case, you can go to the market, and the expertise in the market, the systems are in the market to help them do it. He said uh, they charge him 0.4%, which is perfect. The schemes that are large enough and can have in-house management of those funds. And for example, applying the same 0.4% that is being charged to NSF will result into 34 billion shillings. Now, today, the NSF investment department, which has got professionals, we have a number of CFAs, is costing the fund 4 billion shillings. 30 billion shillings less than if it was sourced. So I think depending on the capabilities of a scheme, of a scheme. they should have the option to manage it in-house or outsource it. The global funds now are moving towards bringing it back in-house because mm. they found out that outsourcing funds neither increases returns nor reduces risks. That was, uh, that's how mm. you can actually do it. The second one that Kenneth talked about, which was interesting about <laughs> mandate, is that the money already belongs to you. <laughs> I want to assure Kenneth, you may think so, but as long as it is in his pocket, in the employer's pocket, it is voluntary. He can choose to give it to you or not. Hmm. When the government forces him to give it to an SSF, now you are guaranteed it is yours. You have no guarantee it is yours as long as it is in your employer's pocket. But I think his argument was that it, it is looked at in the gross. True. Yeah. But the, remember, the guy can choose to give it to you or put it in his pocket as a dividend. He can exactly. choose to keep it as a dividend. You will not be obliged. He is not obliged to give it to you. Okay, uh, our time is almost out, so this is what we're going to do, uh, beginning with you, uh, Francis, your concluding remark on the show tonight. My concluding remark is uh, this process has uh, been ongoing from uh, uh, 2003. We have had views. I think that uh, we should continue. The bill should not be withdrawn, as the minister has had proposed. I think that uh, there are good things in that bill. It provides for uh, increase on voluntary schemes. It provides for inclusion of informal sector. It provides for widening of the scope of benefits. It provides for mid-access. There's something we have not discussed which is very critical about the public service pension scheme. I think it, 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 it brings that chaotic sector. You know, you've seen the public service pension scheme is unsustainable today. You know, 
it, it it's taking quite a lot of money in in trillions you know and 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 the the, 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 the workers are increasing we've got to think about that by making it as well a contributory scheme and the bill proposes that all this at the end of the day will unlock many things in the economy we think that the players uh, the bill should be improved it should be tinkered to ensure that provisions such as repeal of NSSF are removed it f should focus on reform of the pension sector but we also think that there is good reason for it to provide for limited liberalization limited and liberalization yes so that maybe the segment, uh, maybe the other one percentage yes. is contributed to uh, we propose mandatory somewhere yes and and then another one you can choose exactly maybe my individual contribution i can choose yes. my employer's contribution is can go to yes we are thinking there's the good reason for that at least worst case scenario let's see what that does for a number of years and put into we told parliament you can even put a clause in the bill that we, we shall have a review of that after 10 years okay to see how it works but i think let's conclude this process this is a very important sector we cannot keep walking in circles on this mm -hmm. issue we have got to be decisive parliament must resolve mm -hmm. uh, to improve this law and pass it so that uh, the, the process of pension reform is concluded Mr. Patrick, are you at your parting shot? Th thank you very much. And I think uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Gumara on one thing. There are reforms that are needed. You cannot withdraw this bill and leave the place blank. If we withdraw it, you have to replace it with something else. That is much better. So uh, people have thought that when you withdraw it, then it's going to be blank. Business will be as usual. No, you cannot leave the patient sector today business as usual. You can actually you have to bring back something to replace that bill. Either through an amendment of the NSF Act or a totally new bill, but you cannot leave it blank because reforms are needed. Are, needed. This are, are you in a good working relation with your regulator? Let me ask. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> we have to. He's my regulator. I cannot <laughs> afford to <laughs> offend my regulator. <laughs> <laughs> but secondly, the reforms that have to be done have to actually accomplish the following Does it create safety or strengthen safety? Does it encourage coverage? Does it? provide for adequacy. And we think the global practice is you have a basic scheme, a national scheme, that offers that basic guarantee, this time it's NSF, then layer it on with then other provisions that provide incentives for Ugandans to save for pensions, either tax incentives through the employers, whatever it is, so that it happens. When we do that, it will actually now be a very sensible bill that we have that can move the pension sector forward. Livingston, your concluding remark. Uh, Ugandans, we need to democratize pension. For me, that, that, that's a no-brainer. We've talked about financial, exclu uh, financial inclusion, and we talked about credit insurance and access to a bank account, but we're failing to talk about the number five, which is pension inclusion, and it's, it's critical for our nation. So as, uh, from, from our side, we probably, I agree with uh, the contributions from my land friend here, um, Francis, the reform needs to go ahead. But I also don't want us to be in a freeze, if, to be freezed that we will do this only when the bill happens. Mm -hmm. So our approach as Mazima Retirement Plan is to have, because if we had not come up, nobody would be saying, oh, the informal sector can have something, because the regulator institutions were there. So, so let's work with what we have as we fight. So if you have something, let's work with what we have while we're trying to, work to, to, to get the bill passed. And in summary, the global trend is retirement saving is in moving to the individual rather than your employer forcing you. So the issue of integrating individual retirement accounts into our financial system is critical. That's what we are working on. For us, it's a big case. Can you walk into your bank and open an individual retirement account? Whether the money ends up with the NSSF of Mazima, that's a back-end case. But it's something that everyone needs to have. So there, there, there are trends to show that there are people who want that. That's for sure. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Livingston Mukasa, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Mazima Retirement Plan. And thank you very much, Mr. Patrick Ayota, Chief Finance Officer of uh, National Social Security Fund. And thank you very much, Mr. Francis Gimara, 
the president of Uganda Law Society and all of you who have been a part of this and those who have made your calls and I think this debate and the discussion is going to continue because it's about our retirement and we need to have a continue with a better life in retirement. Everybody needs that, I suppose. Good night Thank and God you. bless you, Uganda. Thank you. Thank you.